we are asked to evaluate each expression if the expression does not yield a real number or type imaginary. For number one, we have the square root of 121. Formally, this is the principal square root, which means this simplifies to a value greater than or equal to zero, that if we square it, we get the radicand of 121. And since 121 is a perfect square, this simplifies perfectly. 121 is equal to 11 times 11, so let's write this as the square root of 11 times 11, which we can also write as the square root of 11 squared. And since 11 squared is equal to 121, the square root of 121 is equal to positive 11. So again, this simplifies to 11 because positive 11 squared is equal to 121, and 11 is greater than or equal to zero. Notice how it's also true that if we square negative 11, we still get positive 121. So 121 actually has two square roots, positive 11 and negative 11, but the notation used here, the principal square root, indicates we only want the positive square root. For number two, we have a negative square root of 121, or the opposite of the square root of 121, and therefore this simplifies to negative 11, the other square root of 121. Let's go ahead and show some work here and write this as negative or the opposite of the square root of 11 times 11, which is equal to the opposite or negative square root of 11 squared, which simplifies to negative 11. And then for number three, we have the square root of negative 121. And we have a problem here because we already know if we square a positive or square a negative, the result is always positive. And since we cannot square a positive or negative number, to get negative 121, this is not a real number, and therefore we enter imaginary. We can simplify this using the set of numbers called complex numbers, which we will learn about later. I hope you found this helpful.